Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is TBR Schmidt and this is my wife Samantha. Hello. And today we are watching Generation Kill. What do you know about this? I don't know anything about <laughs> this. Obviously we've watched Band of Brothers and we watched The Pacific. Yeah, so this is another HBO miniseries. Um, it was highly requested in all of the comment section for Band of Brothers and The Pacific. Mm -hmm. And it follows a group of Marines through, I think, the beginning days of the war in Iraq. All right, so more current. Right, so a much more current time frame. Than Band of Brothers in the Pacific. Yeah. Both of those series were fantastic. We also just finished True Detective, which was also HBO, so HBO is killing it. Yeah, we're just doing a whole bunch of HBO content, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, so um, I'm looking forward to this series, and I'm sure this is gonna be emotional just like the other yeah i'm two. sure it'll have its moments of pretty rough stuff to watch yeah but regardless super excited to get into it yeah me too so if you'd like to see the full length reaction to this as well as everything else that we've reacted to the link to our patreon is in the description if you would like to interact with us on our instagrams on twitch or twitter all those links are in the description as well and with that let's get into the episode you can hear flies buzzing You know, we've dealt like with a lot of different elements, but the desert is not one of them yet. Yeah. Man, starting off with some action. Jeez. It's like nowhere to hide in this just like flat. Right, just yeah. emptiness. I haven't even really seen anyone yet, just the vehicles. What the hell? I don't know how he got hit. How does it feel to be fucking dead? Bro, it feels sad. I gotta take a shit. Is this like a training thing? Do a little after action on this. That explains why we didn't see any enemies. The nearest element could stop and evaluate the marine. Other elements push through and provide support by fire. Yeah, that works, Brad. All right. Seems a, like a better idea. Yeah, than just kind of blowing through. Right. These people still haven't picked up the trash from the last war. White man's got to rule the world. Hitman two. All right. It's an interesting intro. Yeah. Definitely some hungry marines to get some action so much going on <laughs> no, in here right? the important thing is we are doing our jobs by being here no if you knew anything about j-lo being killed <laughs> she's my cousin ray the battalion commander offered no sit rep as to j-lo's status i'm sure they would have told him if she did die j-lo's dead apparently that's the word <laughs> that's their main concern right now how are you gonna make your war movie when you're gonna be busy driving my Humvee? Bra. What do you think? Oh, this guy's familiar. And I recognize Skarsgård. Alexander Skarsgård or something like that. Mm. You're always doing that shit. <laughs> Same move every fucking day. Packing rocks? What's going on? Walk. Yeah, I guess he's training. Checkmate, bitch. That's hardcore. Holy oh. shit. Oh. He's moving. Let's go stay that dragon! Fruity Rudy. Gusting up to 70 miles per hour. Oof. Word from the CG. Oh, what a voice. Securing that bridge over the Euphrates and holding it. And Godfather can't tell the general we don't do windows. Is he Godfather? I is that why he's <laughs> with his raspy voice? Maintaining a grooming standard is mission critical. And so they're going in pretty aggressive. Here we are invading a country with ghetto booties. And they sent over the shitty vehicles first. Blue collar man gets to go into the home of the white collar man, sleep in his bed, and fuck his shit up. Jeff, you realize you're a communist. <laughs> Downtown Baghdad. You up in the 21st century world back there in the Stone Age, man. Some fancy tech. With the shark tails hanging out. So concerned about outfits. Your mustache hair is in violations going beyond the corner. Your mouth. What? Y'all starting to look like Elvises! Like the fashion police? Yeah, seriously. More concerned about a mustache slightly over the mouth and a shirt untucked than the 
actual production that's going on. Just another five dozen letters from fucking school kids and shit. They're gonna find out about JLo. <laughs> I am glad that you are so brave, and I pray for you. Clearly, you have mistaken me for some sort of communist dick suck. <laughs> Peace sucks a hairy asshole, Freddy. War is the motherfucking answer. Oh yeah. <laughs> I wonder if uh, once they see combat, how much of their tone is gonna change, or if they're gonna be just still super excited for it. Yeah, because they seem like new, right? I don't feel like they've been in combat yet, yeah. I would assume. Not all of them. Right. Fuck is all in your grave, devil dog? My boonie. We're carnivorous motherfuckers, dog, and you gotta carry it like that. Watching out for him. Cocky motherfuckers. I think that's enough. <laughs> they don't want us to know JLo's dead. They gonna fuck with morale. <laughs> It is windy. That wind is crazy. Oh my god. Is that a porta potty? I think so. He's so calm. Yeah. He's a good leader. Who's this guy? A reporter or something? This is a writer who's gonna embed with us. He's from Rolling Stone, so be gentle. Dang, Rolling Stone? You're right about how we're all baby killers. Could be worse. I used to write for Hustler. You wrote for Hustler? <laughs> what did you write for Hustler? <laughs> now he's a hero. Beaver Hunt. Oh, oh you wrote oh. Beaver Hunt? <laughs> this Changed their tune pretty right, quickly. Yeah. Grabbing his bags for him. They got you in the fucking ghetto. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> White race sink is low. As James's mother has. I think she's better than the brother she sells that ass to in the parking lot of the titty bar she works at. No, fuck you, man. She's a bookkeeper. He's like, do I write this down? <laughs> We're gonna join us Border Patrol and shoot us some wet back. Yeah, <laughs> shoot wet back. Jesus. You mocking me? What? Unsanitary and in violations of Godfather's grim standards. You totally shaved. Yeah. Sergeant Major Six's job is to be an asshole. <laughs> Major asshole. Stove underneath Rudy's espresso pot went off like a 40 mic mic. Oh. And without my RTO, I will be going to war, unable to quickly and effectively establish radio communications. This platoon is going down over an espresso maker. Before they even get to war. Corporal person sustained minor injuries when a cook stove being operated according to regulations. According to regulation? And the men operating this cook stove were outside the tent when this happened? Yes, sir. Ooh. You witnessed this. Yes, sir. Wow. And the swift action of my Marines to treat corporal person. He's taking a lot on his shoulders. They have to know he's lying. Yeah. Well, he he lied for him. Triple A batteries. Oh, there's a subway? Was it? Yeah. <laughs> they won't sell this stuff in quantity to actual military personnel. And why is that? To keep us angry. We would be happy and we wouldn't be ready to kill people all the time. <laughs> Oh my god. What's the big deal with the battery? Our night vision. The talent didn't bring enough batteries. We had a ration. That seems important. Yeah. Fuck if Colbert didn't try and have a shield for the turret FedEx. Not that it'll get here in time. I feel like this shield for the turret's gonna be pretty important. Had it custom engineered. Custom engineered his own shield? Me and Brad spent $500 of our own money just fixing up the Humvee. Bought our own antennas, filters, it's cami nets. Face looks pretty bad. That's insane that they had to spend their own money to fix up their Humvee. Huh. Brad, unidentified victors at the checkpoint. This is a lot of people coming. Oh, it's Pizza Hut? Unfucking believable. <laughs> it's Subway and Pizza Hut. Man, I'm starving now. <laughs> just when I thought I stopped loving the Marine Corps, they go and they do this. <laughs> the Corps doesn't just bring pizza pies all the way from Kuwait City for no reason. Yeah, they're going out. So be prepared to move the staging area within the next 48 hours. Can I have just one final moment enjoying the fruit? <laughs> oh my god. Hidden a chemical environment, you're fucked anyway. Dang. Anyone happen to remember we're invading a fucking desert country? Oh my god. President! 
is watching. It's crazy how much equipment was just fucked up. Kill! They look ready to go, that's for sure. Dang. So it doesn't look like we're seeing, a, we're not going to spend a lot of time on training. No, I mean. We had just, that like first scene and that was about it. Yeah. Yeah, Band of Brothers, the first entire episode was just kind of training. Don't spit on my Humvee ride. I didn't always get it on the side of my Humvee. <laughs> your teeth, right? Oh, okay. There's different ways to spit? I guess. <laughs> Do you mean you guys are invading Iraq with just one translator? Sir, we cannot delay any longer. This is a translator? First couple of times I did, I puked a little bit. <laughs> oh, man. Does not seem like a good idea. No. It's gotta be the worst time to start this. Look at them all. I know. So many of these Humvees have like no protection though. Yes, yes, yes. Oh shit. I don't know if this is training or not. Doesn't seem like training. This reporter. What did he do? He's holding his crotch. He's just all tangled up. Form testicle surgery on the reporter. Oh, did he like zip up on his balls? I forgot to spit out my tobacco, so I had to swallow it. <laughs> This reporter. That was hard to watch. <laughs> you know, it doesn't make you gay if you think Rudy's hot. We all think he's hot. <laughs> now you're rolling in a battle in your goddamn chicken suit and J-Lo glasses. <laughs> I wear clothes that are body conscious. Uh. <laughs> oh, he there got the tobacco go. this time. Hey, good job, reporter. I got it. All mustaches grown for the divisional contest are all to be shaved by the time we reach the Euphrates. No more mustaches. I tape my window so I can turn my laptop on without enemies seeing the light. We're not getting escort tanks or Cobras going over the border. Oh, man. Any reason you waited till now to tell me about this? Is he taping up his windows? Which I also feel like is a poor idea. Yeah, he's not going to be able to see out, right? Yeah. A couple of dudes killed hundreds of thousands. That fucking rules. As we are five clicks out from breach point two, over. So dark. I think they got those batteries for their night vision. I wish I had some shrooms. This is the fucking shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's lack of pussy that fucks countries up. <laughs> it's interesting take. When you do rip fuel, you can't shut up. Oh, hit man, Rip fuel? What the hell is that? It's an interesting theory, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's not about oil or WMDs. No. In the opinion of this Marine, it's about pussy. Oh my god. Please shut up. Just pay attention to driving. Wake up, Tromley. You're missing the invasion. How do you sleep? <laughs> Man, stuff is going down for sure over there. Bombs like crazy. Oh, shit. Whoa. Can't tell if it's a pipe or a tank tube. Huh. We don't even want to be in this shit. Stop oh. scribbling. <laughs> this guy never shuts <laughs> up. I just waved in an Iraqi, and he waved back. That was cool. Good, <laughs> Garza. Afternoon, sir. Beautiful day to get a war on. Beautiful day to get a war on. Never, ever let charms into this vehicle again. It's bad luck. What the hell are charms? I got 70 of them out here. This Captain America's unprofessional. Captain America just spreads fear on this radio. <laughs> Almost got that high note. Oh, that was so bad. Oh, cute. Don't shoot him, Garza. I'm like really afraid for something's gonna pop off at some point, you know? Yeah, this seems like very calm. I observed men with AKs. You have two victors with armed Iraqis approaching. I'll copy. Can you wave them off? Over. Wave them off. Marked victors with weapons pointed at us. Over. And they should be firing at us. Should be firing at you? 
That was interesting. Yeah, I'm surprised that worked. Our first contact with armed Iraqis, and we wave at them like bitches. You drop your pots, gentlemen. What's wrong with his helmet? And my Kevlar fucking stinks. <laughs> we, gentlemen, are the northernmost unit in Iraq. So then the bridge is off? No word. Jeez. Still don't really know what they're going to do. We're still very much in the game, gentlemen. Voice sound that way? Throw cancer. You a smoker? Just lucky, I guess. You're gonna shoot me a dog. Oh, what? No, you're not, Trombley. No one's shooting any dogs in Iraq. Oh. Oh, good cash. Holy shit. Military yeah, yeah, yeah. no, issue, dog. Somebody down the line already gave these guys MREs. This is the shit PSYOPs dropped on Iraqi forces, promising safe passage to any who surrender to the Americans. Huh. Uh, on a bridge by the canal, there are Iraqi military death squads that are executing Iraqi soldiers who flee. White SUVs with red diamonds on them. They're oh my gosh. So that bridge and those guys they saw. Yeah. Shoot that fucking dog! Donald, give it a piece of your jerky. This Captain America sucks. We're not gonna deal with these surrenders. Send them all back the way they came. Dang. We have orders, Nate. They were all told to surrender. Now they're just going to be sent back. Send them back where? What, the fucking death squad? Right, this is you see it. We're not here to stop you. His first contact with Americans. We fuck them. Yeah, seriously, their first contact and you send them back. Yeah, they talk about don't shoot civilians, right. but it's like... Send them back towards death squads. I mean, they don't seem happy about it at all. Yeah. Also, at a certain point, what do you do with all of them? They're going deeper into Iraq. Just kind of surprised they didn't let them keep walking. Just somewhere? Down. Yeah. Yeah. Or to the next, like, outpost or something. Right. All right. That was episode one of Generation Kill. What'd you think? That was intense and not in like a combat sense. Yeah. There's a lot of very different personalities here and there's a lot of excitement and I feel like buildup of them just being there. Right. But they haven't gone out. They haven't like actually faced that combat yet. So I feel like there's just a lot of buildup. Yeah, there's a lot of like tension going on. Yes. And it, I'm not quite sure if um, any of these Marines or how many of these Marines have already had combat. I think we know some of them, or at least one of them is new to the to the group. Right. So I'm not 100% sure how, how much combat all of them have already had, but they're clearly very anxious to kind of get things going. Yes, and we completely skipped over any training, which is similar to the Pacific versus Band of Brothers. Yeah. Um, so the story is just kind of getting right into it. At the same time, we didn't actually see any like firefights yet. No, I mean, we've had like explosions off in the distance, uh, but that's about it. For the most part, this first episode was, I feel like just kind of showing a typical day, I guess, like for these Marines in the early days of the war in Iraq. And it was very unique compared to what we saw in Band of Brothers or the Pacific. Kind of like you said, the personalities of these men is very different. Wildly different between like every single one of those guys. Yeah. And then we have the element of the journalist from Rolling Stone. And especially at the end there, I found that very interesting. Like they were not trying to manipulate what he's reporting. No. And he seems to be fitting in pretty well with the guys, considering he was a little bit of a mess. Yeah. The first time he was kind of out there, had to put his gas mask on. Yeah, he like trapped his balls or something like that. Yeah. He uh, had to swallow it and then, you know, <laughs> finally remembered to take it out the second time. but. Yeah, he's an interesting character for sure. And I'm not really quite sure if this is like the Pacific or Band of Brothers, if these are true individuals or if all of these people were created for the purpose of the show. Yeah, we might need to look into that prior to the next episode, but there wasn't anything about this being based on... Obviously, the war is true, yes. but 
these specific circumstances, I'm not 100% sure. Right. But I really did enjoy that reporter because he seemed to be kind of everywhere and he was listening and, and observing. Mm -hmm. And I do like that last line of like, you know, we're not trying to stop you, like report as you see it. Right, because that was kind of crazy there at the end. Yeah. When they're getting, you know, orders to essentially send those men back and they know exactly what they're sending them back to. Yeah, just literally death. Right. So it, it was interesting because, you know, throughout the course of this episode, the standard conversation that's kind of being happening with a good amount of them, it's pretty, pretty rough. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, however you want to form your opinion on it, that's totally fine. But when it comes down to it, you see the faces of all of the Marines as they send the Iraqis walking back. Mm -hmm. And that was an order that they were given, that they had to follow. But looking at their face, clearly they understood that this is not the appropriate thing necessarily to do to these people because we are almost guaranteeing them to just walk back to their death. Right. Yeah, nobody was wanting to do that no. they, they've throughout the episode they're very clearly they like wanted to you know shoot somebody or yeah, even I, down to the dogs yeah everyone's kind of like fuck this you know fuck that let's kill some people we're here to kill mm -hmm. and then they get into a situation where i think it's uh lieutenant nathan fick i'm we're looking at the names i believe that's the character who was kind of on the phone be like i have two you know white car or white trucks with the diamond logos like they were given that order where it's like if you feel like in your mind where you need to shoot to protect yourself or your fellow marines like that's appropriate but you know they were so anxious to kind of get into it like you would think that they would see these people approaching with guns and they would just open fire but they you know talked it and got permission and figure out what to do okay wave that off like you said here's a dog they're getting orders to kill it and they're like we're not gonna kill a dog like why and then you know again the way the episode ended was the reality of sending all these people back and then they're also likely not going to be trying to take that bridge which it sounds like this is where this is all going down right so i feel like there's just a lot of misconnections for them that they're now really feeling it even weighted heavier on them by sending those men back yeah absolutely so very interesting definitely a different dynamic than the other war miniseries that we've watched so far but i'm really excited to get into it i think there is just such a diverse group of men personality wise that i think that there's gonna be a lot of stuff going on amongst them right other than just war right yeah absolutely i could definitely see stuff going on between them as well as the situations that surround them mm -hmm. i think having this reporter here the entire time is going to be an interesting way because it's almost like we're observing and the reporter's observing so we're getting like a bunch of different viewpoints of the same situation mm -hmm. and i think the thing that's going to be the most different i feel like with band of brothers and the pacific for the large majority of it it was very clear cut it was Here's the, you know, the enemy forces and the forces that we're viewing. Whereas this, you know, it's going to be hard to identify who is a civilian and who is an enemy force. Mm -hmm. You know, we briefly saw a little bit of that in the Pacific, but I feel like this is going to be just an absolute constant. It's not like they're going to be necessarily fighting people in standard issued uniforms right. all of the time. Yes. Because even like the the scene where they're kind of getting all of these people who are surrendering and he started pouring out the water and i was like oh that sucks and then they found a knife and i was like oh okay i guess that doesn't suck like that was really good searching yeah no absolutely it seemed like it was like oh come on it's water and it's like all right it's not <laughs> no like we clearly were not prepared for that right yeah the series that we've watched so far it's well they're not dressed like an enemy mm -hmm. i think that's going to be a, a main focal point of this is just like how do you trust exactly what you're processing in real time right yeah i think you're right i think this is going to be that's going to be a huge point of contention with the guys throughout the series is just determining okay, what do we do here? Is this a bad situation? Is it not? Like, are these people just trying to surrender? Is this an actual person that could cause us harm? Yeah, I think 
The other series that we've seen, it was very, you know, black and white. It was like, go take this objective. And then that's it. You know, everyone who's there is most likely an enemy. Mm -hmm. Whereas this, you know, it, it's going to be so much gray area of how do we handle this situation. I feel like every situation we're going to see is going to be just extra stressful because it's like, are we even doing the right thing? Yeah. So it, it was a very interesting setup to this series. The actors were all great. The personalities were all super interesting and some good, some bad, <laughs> some all over the place. Yeah. So we'll see how that progresses as the, the show goes. Right. Uh, but I'm really intrigued with this series so far. Yeah, me too. And I think that we've really enjoyed every single mini series that we've seen so far. Yeah. So I assume this is going to be no different and I'm excited for the rest of the episodes. Yeah, me too. So if you'd like to see a full length reaction to this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on any other types of social media, all those links will be in the description as well. And with that, peace everyone. Bye. Bye.